One of them was giving a little background of how Govardhan had appeared and some very nice song, Ashtaka prayers by Rupa Goswami glorifying Govardhan as the best of Krishna's devotees. We spent some time, one, one unanswered question during the morning session, I would like to supply the answer to. There was a question, <clears throat> if Govardhan is the best <clears throat> of Krishna's devotees, what rasa is Govardhan in? And with a little bit of research, wouldn't be too difficult. There's a nice answer. It's Sakya Rasa. <clears throat> but the category of Sakya Rasa, according to our Acharyas, is Purnatama. Purnatama means most perfect. Just like in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, the description of Krishna's pastimes in different places in <clears throat> Dwarka, in Mathura, and in Vrindavan is perfect, more perfect, most perfect. So as Krishna's most perfect in Vrindavan, Govardhan is most perfect amongst those who are in Sakirasa. Here's the reference. This is Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur writing in his commentary in Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 11, Chapter 12. He writes, the inhabitants of Braja are most special. By bhavas, without mixture of karma or gyan, without desires, by bhakti yoga with Madhurya, Vatsalya, Sakya, and Dasya Bhavs, they attained me. The gopis attained me with Madhurya Rasa. The cows attained me by Vatsalya Rasa. The mountains, like Govardhan, attained me with Sakya Rasa. The animals and trees and shrubs, though unintelligent, snakes like Kaliya, attained me with dasya rasa. Now, that may be a bit of a surprise that Kalya achieved dasya rasa. He seemed to be pretty envious, but here's the authoritative description. And connected with all of this is, we heard there are two other personalities, namely Yudhisthir and Uddhava, are also described in Bhagavatam as Dasya, excuse me, Sakya Rasa. Of course, they have a mixture of other Rasas along with friendship. But in, in sequence, Uddhava, Yudhisthira Maharaj, and Govardhan, most perfect, poor Natama. Sakya Rasa. So there's an answer to a question from the morning discussion. Now, let us go to this Google map that you've been seeing. And you're familiar with this one because we've visited all these places. Down in the lower right corner, that square, that's Kusum Sarovar, black, blackish square. And uh, next to it, is the um, Ratnakund. Something's not right. Something's not right. It's Yeah, it is right, Ratnakund. Um, we're going to be going down the side of Govardhan Hill to Manasi Ganga, you see where number three is in this map. And then there's Govardhan Town, that's number four. Three and four is where we're headed. And if you notice number five is directly across from Kusum Sarovar, that's Uddhavakund. We're going to visit Uddhavakund uh, on the next to the last day.
or tomorrow morning, I guess it'll be. Maybe it'll be tomorrow evening. The Uddhava Kund and the Uddhava Temple are on opposite sides of Govardhan Hill. So that's the map of where we are and where we're going. We're going heading for Manasi Ganga. And as we move along, Govardhan starts to make its appearance. We heard the description of Govardhan shrinking and Govardhan just making its appearance. Similarly, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu first came to Vrindavan and first made his parikrama around Govardhan Hill, when he saw uh, one of the Shilas, he embraced that Shila and began weeping in madness, thinking he has found Krishna. So here the hill gets a little taller and as we're moving along, still a little taller. And there are many places along the side of the road where devotees set up a little place of worship. You see towards the center, there's a little, a few shilas stacked upon one another. This is a practice of local devotees for making a residence at Govardhan Hill where they can, they can in their next birth take birth and reside by the side of Govardhan Hill. And here's a place where some shilas are set and worship is done by the local devotees on a regular basis. Now, some of you may or may not know the name of this devotee, Tribhuvanath Prabhu. Tribhuvanath Prabhu was a Prabhupada disciple who started the Hare Krishna movement when he was a teenager in the UK. And he was very enthusiastic, very dynamic, very effective, very much loved by all the devotees, individual. And he left his body early and he made this request that his Pushpa Samadhi be placed by the side of Govardhan Hill. Very nice. It uh, was much simpler before. They've made it a little bit nicer since then. But that's many, many years ago, this was put in place. Here is the same area of Govardhan Hill during the rainy season. Looks quite different when rain is there abundantly. Here's the same image, but just a little closer look. And here you can see where devotees do their worship of Govardhan Hill, right at Govardhan Hill itself. In the morning session, we mentioned this nice devotee, Sarup Das Baba, who is a Pujari at the Jagannath Temple in Radhakund. We're going to visit there. We'll see his photos, a nice sadhu. And he's made these maps after extensive uh, journeying around Govardhan and other places in Vrindavan as well. So this shows his drawing. Next, we're going to see a, a Google map image, but there's Manasi Ganga. Over on the left side of Manasi Ganga is Chakra Tirtha. We're going to visit that first. And there's several other places. There Mukharavind. Mukharavind is the mouth of Govardhan and the sitting place of Sanatan Goswami, we'll visit there as well. And on the right side of Manasi Ganga, you'll see um, the, the Manasi Ganga temple and the Haridev temple. And we're going to visit all these places this evening. To the left and to the right, you'll see the image where Govardhan Hill subsides and all around and then again to the far right is where it again resumes. And Govardhan Town is basically built on top of where Govardhan Hill has subsided into the ground. So uh, notice at the bottom, you'll see Saki Stali. We're going to visit Saki Stali on our way back up the other side of Govardhan Hill. This is just to give you a picture of where we are and where we're going. 
here's the image, Google image of Govardhan town. That's that white area on the left. That's where all the rooftops are made looking like that. Um, the, the shape of Manasi Ganga is different. Uh, here, here is the, the details of where we're going to be visiting. Number one at the very bottom, that's the entering point. That's where you, from the Parikrama path, you go into Manasi Ganga. We're then going to go first to Chakaleshwara. Chakaleshwara is number two. Then Mukharavind, number three. And the Manasi Devi, four, and Hari Dev, number five. Those are principal places, and there's multiple sub places in between. So let's go to number two. The Chakaleshwara Mahadev is in the Chakra Tirtha area. And it's described, the Chakra Tirtha area is described in Gopal Champu by Jiva Goswami that at the time of Krishna's pastime of curbing the pride of Indra and torrents of rain came from his mind, Krishna called Anantashesh and his Sudarsan Chakra to assist to give protection. So Anantashesh immediately manifested, massive form, a serpent form made like a boundary wall surrounding the area underneath Govardhan Hill so the water wouldn't come. And Chakra, Sudarsan Chakra, moved rapidly around and around and around and around and evaporated all the water. And since that lasted for seven days and seven nights, at the end, Sudarsan Chakra was exhausted. And so he took rest in this vicinity. It's known as Chakra Tirtha. And according to Bhakti Ratnakar, the Chakra Tirtha is one of the places where Krishna would perform his swing pastimes with Radharani. And Chakaleshwara Mahadev is one of the, we'll see an image shortly. It's right next to the Bhajan Kutir place of Sanatan Goswami. What you're looking at in this photograph is Sanatan Goswami's, one of his Bhajan Kutir places, which he, was one of his favorite places. He uh, engaged in chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra exhaustively every day, sit, seated by the side of Manasi Ganga. He considered it a very sacred place, which it is. Nearby, just to our left, as you're looking at, at, at his um, Bhajan Kutir is a place called Chakaleshwara Mahadev. According to the, those in very detailed knowledge of the Dham, there are five principal places where there's protectors of the Dham, Chetrapal Shiva, they're called. And this is one of the five principal ones in all of Vrindavan. The five shilas there represent the Pancha Mukhi Lord Shiva. And here are the devotees worshiping the Pancha Mukhi Shiva, the Shiva Lingas. And during Kartik month, he gets a very special attire, nice turban, a nice cloth covering him and decorated very nicely and all the other Lingas similarly. <laughs> There's a wonderful relationship between Lord Shiva and Sanatan Goswami, although Shiva, we know is Mahadev and Vaishnavanam Yatashambhu, he very much appreciated and relished the proximate association of Sanatan Goswami. So there's a celebrated pastime between the two when Sanatan Goswami, because Manasi Ganga, or water in general is a breeding place for mosquitoes during certain se seasons of the year, mosquitoes would be overabundant. And it was disturbing Sanatana Goswami's chanting. So he decided without saying anything to anyone 
that he was the next day going to leave. And it is said that in his dream, Lord Shiva came and said, please don't leave, please don't go. I'll take care of the mosquitoes. Please stay at least one more day and you'll see. So Sanatana Goswami was a bit amazed and acknowledged. And it is said from that day until today, the mosquitoes don't go in that area. They may be other places in Manasi Kanga, but not around Sanatan Goswami's Bhajan Kutir. Sanatan Goswami had very strict vows. Chaitanya Charitamrita describes his vows were like lines in stone. He wouldn't violate them for anything. Sometimes we may have some difficulty. Some devotees have some difficulty completing their japa. Well, Sanatana Goswami was, when he became very, very old, it was difficult for him not only to do his japa, but he had a practice every day, every day, circumambulating Govardhan Hill. Now, if you walk swiftly, you're not elderly, you can move around Govardhan in a little over five hours. And if you're elderly, it may take you much longer. So at certain point, one small village boy came, it was Krishna, and said, my dear Sanatan, you're so old. There's no need for you to do this it's circumambulation around Govardhan. You're already a perfected being. And so he said, let me do this. I'll bring a Govardhan Shila with the footprints of Krishna and, and you circumambulate around this Govardhan Shila with Krishna's footprint and the marks of a cow seven times and it's the same as going around the whole of Govardhan. And that this young village boy who was Krishna himself brought a nice Govardhan Shila and Sanatana Goswami from that day forward followed that practice. In fact, Sanatana Goswami left his body at this very place from his Bhajan Kutira Chakra Tirtha. The arrangements were made for his body to be taken to the place where Madan Mohan Temple is in Vrindavan in procession, a grand procession. And his, he was placed in Samadhi there. And the Govardhan Shila that was worshipped by Sanatana Goswami is now at the Radha Damodar temple. It's a very nice um, part of the, the deity worship at Radha Damodar. And you request the pujaris, they don't regularly display, but with a few rupees, they'll show you the uh, Shila of Sanatana Goswami. He was very, very dedicated to Govardhan and dedicated to this place in Manasi Ganga, right nearby his Bhajan Kutir on the opposite side is the Mahaprabhu temple. Naturally, he was a worshiper of Mahaprabhu, a dear devotee of Mahaprabhu. And at this very same place, Chakra Tirtha, there's a very lengthy description given in Bhakti Ratnakar of a story told by uh, the, the, when Srinivasacharya and Naratam Das Thakur were being taken in Prakrama by Raghava Goswami and they came to the Chakra Tirtha area, he told a very detailed story of a Brahmana, a wealthy Brahmana who lived in the area and um, he had a very deep regard for Balaram. He was a Balaram Bhakta. And he worshiped and he prayed and he prayed. And at this time, Lord Nityananda was also in Vrindavan. In fact, he was circumambulating on a regular basis, Govardhan Hill, as you may know. After Nityananda left his home as a young boy, around the time of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's appearance, he traveled to holy places throughout India and spent the final time before he came to be with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Vrindavan. 
we'll see when we do the Radhakund Parikrama, there's his sitting place, as there is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's sitting place. So one of the places that Nityananda res participated in, in Govardhan Parikrama, was right at Chakra Tirtha. And so this Brahmana, in a dream, he saw Balaram very fabulously decorated. And then he saw Balaram turn, turn into a, Bra a Brahmana, who was Lord Nityananda, and said, very soon, I will meet you. So he was very enthusiastic. And that very day, next day, he met Lord Nityananda. He didn't recognize who was Lord Nityananda. But he saw him and was very attracted by his qualities and his beauty and his natural countenance. So he wanted to do some service for him. So he made some offerings on um, some various items of meals and food. And Lord Nityananda is naturally very pleased by devotion. And that evening in his dream, again, he saw Balaram and said, that was me, that sadhu that you met. So he was very eager to find Lord Nityananda again the next day. And he went and there he was. So the Brahmana's heart was fulfilled, recognizing that Lord Nityananda was Lord Balaram. They spent several days talking together, discussing topics of Krishna right here in Chakra Tirtha. And this Mahaprabhu temple by his side, of course, is Lord Nityananda. So these celebrated two individuals during Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's time. Uh, there's now a temple commemorating these activities with Sanatana Goswami and with this uh, Govardhan Brahmana interacting with Lord Nityananda. Very sweet pastimes. Now, how was Manasi Ganga formed? And the, the details are told in different places. Uh, one of these is told in Garga Samhita, no, excuse me, in Gopal Champu. And the narration goes like this, that in the childhood pastimes of Krishna, there was one demon who took the shape of a calf and was planning how he would kill Krishna. Krishna detected this, not a, this is not a calf, this is a demon. He pointed it out to Balaram and told him, watch out. So they snuck up behind him. Balaram, Krishna shows here he grabbed his horns, but he actually grabbed his hind legs, twirled him around, and by centrifugal force, he lost his life. And um, the demon then took again the shape of a demon instead of the shape of a calf and he was killed. So Krishna was very proud of himself. So he went to the gopis and gave the good news. Another demon has been killed. And when Radharani heard this was a calf and you're the killer of our protected calves and Krishna said, no, no, no. He wasn't a calf, it was a demon. He said, well, regardless, you've killed a calf. And so you're sinful, don't come near us. We want nothing to do with your sinful reaction. So Krishna was smiling and said, very well, what atonement must I do to overcome the sin? And Radharani said, you have to bathe in the Ganges and Krishna said, that's very unreasonable. The Ganges is so far away. And Radharani said, well, that's the cure for killing a Brahmana, or killing a, a, ca a cow. You have to take bath in the Ganges. You have to figure it out. There was a really tough exchange between the two. So Krishna began to consider what to do, what to do. And from his mind came the Ganges. And the Ganges then became known as Manasi Ganga because the Ganges came from Krishna's mind. And Krishna was getting ready to take bath in the Ganges and, the, and Radharani said, what? 
the Ganges is so far away. This is another trick of yours. And so Krishna said, no, it's not a trick, watch. And he called out, Ganga Mai, Ganga Mai. And she appeared right from Manasi Ganga, riding on her crocodile carrier. And the gopis were astonished. And they didn't know what to say. They just paid their obeisances to Ganga Mata. And from that day forward, they accepted that Manasi Ganga is actually the Ganga. Then there's another description given where one Brahmana who had been on pilgrimage to various holy places and had spent some time in the eastern side of India where the Ganga flows, he came to Vrindavan and he was telling of his travels and described to the the the, the devotees headed by Nanda Maharaj what his experience was when one time when taking bath in the Ganga, lo and behold, Garuda came flying, uh, carrying uh, one of his favorite meals, a big serpent. And as he was flying, the tail of this long serpent touched the Ganga. And immediately the body of that serpent, which was transformed into a four-armed Vishnu form, and a Vaikuntha Vimana came and took that form back to the spiritual world. Just see how powerful is the Ganga. The Brahmana was very enthusiastic and immediately Nanda jumped up and said, let's go. <laughs> let's take bath in the Ganga. Now, the residents of Vrindavan, they're already in the spiritual world. <laughs> they're with Krishna in the spiritual world. But they observe regulations for purification. That's part of their nature. Even those that are perfected souls, they perform activities for purification. He didn't consider we're in the spiritual world already, so forget it. He said, let's go tomorrow. So as you know, Nandagram is some distance from Govardhan. So they made preparations that day and began their journey and at night they set camp by the side of Govardhan Hill. And Krishna was very surprised. Where is Nanda Baba? Where is he going? So he asked him and his father said, we heard this, all the glories of Ganga. And so we're going on pilgrimage to take bath in the sacred Ganga. And Krishna began to consider, why do you have to go to take bath in the Ganga? Everything is right here in Vrindavan. So he told his father, my dear father, Nanda Maharaj, the Ganga is already here, right in Vrindavan. And Nanda considered, oh, he sometimes just says silly things, child's talk, just smiled. And Krishna said, no, it's true. Now, normally the, the gopis are very shy about revealing their relationship with Krishna, but they confirmed again with Nanda, this, the, the Ganga is right here. And Krishna said, I'll show you. He took his father by the hand and showed him, here's Manasi Ganga. And Nanda smiled and said, yes, yes, yes. This is the Ganga. And very nice. If Krishna could understand his father wasn't taking him seriously. So he said, I'll show you. And again, he called out very loudly, Ganga Mai, Ganga Mai. And she came again, showing herself to Nanda Maharaj. So the whole travel to Ganga was canceled. And from that day forward, this place became known as Manasi Ganga. It's described in Gopal Champu by Jiva Goswami, that this Manasi Ganga at one time, it was much, much bigger. It stretched all the way from here near Govardhan town down to um, Govindakund, which is quite a distance. It was a big stretch. 
Of course, Govardhan was much bigger at that time. Now here you see in the image, um, there's a group of devotees. There's Bibi Govinda Maharaj with his danda standing at a place where a boat pastime of Krishna was performed here at Manasi Ganga. Now there's many boat pastimes and swing pastimes and so forth in many different places. But one very celebrated one was performed here. And there's many different descriptions of it. I'll just narrate two principal ones. This is this till today, one of the boats used to cross Manasi Ganga. And one time, uh, Krishna was arranging to be a boatman. And he, the other, there, there, were, there was no other boats, but his own boat. And it was a rickety old boat. And the gopis wanted to cross Manasi Ganga to take their milk products to the other side, to the marketplace. But there was only this one boat, so they got in. And as they, the boat pulled away from the shore, uh, the boatman said to the gopis, I haven't eaten all day, I'm really hungry. Can you give me some of your dairy products from your milk pots? And so they fed him nicely. And he said, I'm really tired. I think I ate too much. And he <laughs> took a nap. And the gobies were anxious because they had to get to the marketplace. So they shook him and woke him and wake up, boatman. Let's go. We have to get to the other side. And by his own Yogamaya potency, a huge storm suddenly came in. And big waves were rocking the boat and the boat began to fill because it was an old boat and the boat was leaking. And so Krishna was helping, leaning this way, leaning that way, and more water was coming in. And Krishna was saying to the gopis, this is a very dangerous situation. We may not make it to the other side. You're going to have to throw your dairy products over to the side of the ship of the boat. So we show in the painting. And after they did, the water was still coming in, nearly filling up. You can see inside the boat, there's water. So he said, there's too much weight in this boat. You're going to have to throw your jewelry and ornaments over the side of the boat. So very reluctantly, what did our mothers say? Well, what do your mothers say if you drown? So throw them. And so they complied because they simply loved Krishna. Now he's still looking like a boatman, but uh, they must have known he was Krishna because look at him, he's so beautiful, wearing his nice peacock feather on top of his turban. And then Krishna said, you know, I think we're going to sink. I hope you can swim in. If not, maybe because your garments are all wet, throw your garments over the side. And they said, that's it. We're going to throw you over the side. Get us to the other side. And Radharani jumped Krishna and felt inside his waistband was his flute. So then they knew this is Krishna's trick. And suddenly the big storm subsided. This is another nice painting of that pastime. Radharani's in the front of the boat in the red sari. Lalita's in the peacock looking sari, holding on to another one of the gopis that wants to jump. And after the storm subsided, suddenly the rain stopped and the wind stopped and they continued for the rest of the day having nice boat pastimes. Now in, in Vidanta Madhava, there's a very different description of this pastime. In other words, Krishna would have many boat pastimes. And it's as if they, the first one never happened. That is to say, by the Yogamaya potency influence, they would not remember what Krishna did the previous time and did the previous time. Just a new and fresh series of pastimes. So in Vidanta Madhava, the description is, the cowherd boys made a dam so that the water of the Manasi Ganga would stop flowing and it started overflowing 
and the gopis were in great anxiety and they went to Krishna and asked for Krishna's help. So he took leaves from a palasa tree and made a boat and said, let's cross the boat. Let's cross into the, the other side of the Ganga. Come quickly. So uh, they got in the boat and Krishna was making, saying funny things and they were saying funny things back. Radha understood what Krishna wanted and Radha embraced Krishna and that's the end of the story. Doesn't continue on. <laughs> Boat pastimes is one, like tax pastimes we're going to hear shortly about many of, one of the many varieties of tax pastimes of Krishna. So there's Manasi Ganga. And at the far left is that same spot that we saw the devotee standing where the boat dock or the boat got was situated in Manasi Ganga. Now we're going to visit the, the mouth or Mukharavind of Manasi Ganga, that structure that you see right in the center, that's the temple of the mouth of Govardhan. Uh, the Shila with the garland around it in the center, lower center, that's the um, the mouth of Govardhan. And the one that's vertical, you'll see it's said that this is the Mukut Shila with the impression of Krishna's crown on it. And here's a close up of that same Mukut Shila. And here in front of us, this is the mouth of Govardhan Hill. And uh, this many, many people come, you see the clay pots and offer milk and uh, worship this Govardhan Shila. A lot of worship has gone to this Govardhan Shila, Mukharavind Shila. Now we're going back to the Google map and next we're going to see number four and number five, Manasi Devi, as in Manasi Ganga. And here's the temple. Now look above, there's Durga and below there's four deity forms. We're gonna see a close up of those four deity forms. They do change things from time to time. Look now behind, this is an old picture where the Durga image is much smaller. And here's a close up of each of these four personalities. On the far left, this is Manasi Devi. And next to her is Kaila Devi. That's a name of Durga in this area. And next to her is the lion carrier of Durga. And next to her is a child who is a devotee of Manasi Ganga, of Manasi Devi. So this is the Manasi Devi temple right by the side of Manasi Ganga. And there's Durga giving a hard time to bad people. So don't mess with Durga. Very near, just a little meandering path to go around, one comes to the temple of Haridev. And Haridev is said to be one of the original deities installed by Vajranab, the great grandson of Krishna. And <clears throat> is specific as one of the presiding deities of the Western petal of Rajmanda, there's four that are these principal presiding deities of the directions. And the Western direction is presiding deity is Haridev. The original Haridev deity, which was found by the devotees after Krishna's pastimes were forgotten or covered, uh, this deity was then taken for safety to a place near Lucknow. And so the deity that's on the altar presently is a Pratibhu deity. You can see above the deity, that's the Govardhan Hill. The deity of Hari is, has the cowherd boys 
surrounding and some of the gopis surrounding him and he's raising his left hand in the in the posture of holding up Govardhan Hill. Here's on another day, the same deity dressed differently. Here's the same deity again, dressed differently. Here's a, a close up of Hadi Dev, very nice features. And you can see behind him, look where his left hand is rising behind him. This is one of the old style deities or the deities or boss relief. That is the whole deity was not standing alone, but a, a stone piece behind him. And again, here's another photo, another day of the deity being dressed. And uh, these images have our compliments of Bhakti Chaitanya Swami. He's really expert at getting pujaris to do what they're not supposed to do, allow you to take photographs because they have all over the place, no photos, no photos. And they're sometimes really intense about it, but he has such a soft manner and he knows how to work with these people that they allow him to take photos. Here's the lotus feet of the Haridev deity. Nicely decorated, as you can see. So that's it for our visit to Manasi Ganga. This is a photo of Tamal Krishna Raj dropping a few uh, palmfuls of Manasi Ganga water on his forehead for purification and sanctification. So now we're going to go out to the road. And as we entered, we're going to leave Manasi Ganga area and go through Govardhan town. You follow the red line and you see a six and a seven. We're gonna visit these two places. Now six, this is these, by the way, these photographs, the Google maps, again, this is Bhakti Chaitanya Swami's work. One of his favorite places is a sweet shop. <laughs> uh, there's many other photos I'm not showing you, but you know, this is jalebis and this is sewn papri. He seems to really have special appreciation for, for the sewn papris that are made at this sweet shop and many others. It's a celebrated place, a very, very famous place. It's packed with like three, three stalls wide of sweets, well-known shop. And just across the street, almost across the street, is the Lakshmi Narayan Temple. And you may be interested to know that there are 108 Divya Deshas for the Sri Vaishnavas, and this is one of them. And uh, it's at Lakshmi Narayan Temple. But notice above Narayan, he has a peacock feather. So, that is this, Vrindavan is one of the places, and this is the deity, Lakshmi Narayan deity. And you turn the corner to go down again along the side of Govardhan Hill. And I want to bring to your attention what that sign says, Punchari Ka Lota. So there's a spelling of Lota, that's L-O-T-H-A in English, uh, that means waiting. And another spelling of Lota is L-O-T-A. We'll go to the place, Lota Baba, and there they spell it L-O-T-A, meaning that one of Krishna's cowherd boyfriends was named Lota. Lota is still waiting for Krishna to return. We'll visit that place, but as you go down through the shop area, of Govardhan town, we leave Govardhan town. And on our right, the, the first place we're going to visit is a Sheila that uh, it, the locals are very enthusiastic to have you come and see and give some rupees, it is a Sheila where it has the footprint of Radharani. Now maybe you can see right there on the top. And here's some pilgrims bathing that Sheila with milk. And it's a very nice place, very, you can feel it's a uh, uh, nice atmosphere. And here we can directly pay obeisances to Govardhan Hill. Now, as you see, 
the size, the height of Govardhan rises sharply. And on this side of Govardhan Hill, it's almost vertical. And it's a natural place for the devotees to gather together and have Sankirtan when you go in Prikrama together. On the top of the hill is a little structure called Dani Raya. Dani has to do with the tax pastime that took place here. And Raya, it means Krishna in the local language. So the pastime is connected with <clears throat> an event that was arranged by Vasudev, Krishna's father. Krishna's father wanted the welfare of Balaram and Krishna. Of course, all of his relatives that were in Vrindavan, but specifically Balaram and Krishna. And so he arranged with Bhagari Muni to perform a yagya at Govindakund. Bhagari Muni was the son of Gargamuni. We know who Gargamuni is. He did the name giving ceremony for Krishna a very celebrated Brahmana in Mathura town or Mathura city. His son was the chief priest in Vrindavan. He would recite for the, the pleasure of Nanda. He would perform yagyas for the pleasure of the Vaishnavas. And so he was the natural one for Vasudev to be engaged in this yagya. So it's a big yagya. And the gopis came to know that there's gonna be a big yagya by Bhagari Muni down at Govindakund. And so they came ready to offer their dairy products, so much ghee and all sorts of items that would be useful for the yagya. Now, uh, Krishna came to know that the gopis were bringing their dairy products. So there's many different places and many descriptions of the tax pastimes, which apparently like the boat pastimes and the swing pastimes, there were many different places and many different versions and ways in which, because Krishna had a certain enjoyment tendency in different pastimes with the gopis. And this was one of his favorites. Rupa Goswami has written a whole book called Dana Keli Kau Mudi in relation to this tax pastime that takes place on top of Govardhan Hill. Raghunath Das has similarly written his book, Danakeli Chintamani, commemorating this pastime. Another celebrated place, those of you that have been to Vrindavan, you know where Sankari Kor is. It's another tax pastime place. It's a narrow gully to get to one of the gopis' villages, and Krishna confronted them, wanting tax and so forth. So it's this nice image is from the Sankari Kaur pastime. In Raghunath Das's, I'm just going to cover a little bit of what's in the book. It's a very nicely written uh, literature. When Krishna comes and sees Radha, he's stunned by her beauty. And Krishna considers, is this a blossoming Champak vine? No. Champak vines are stationary and this being moves. Is it a lightning flash? No. Lightning shines only for a moment in its sky born cloud. And this being remains continually before me. Is it a river with splendid waves? No, for rivers are formless. And this being has a very beautiful form. This is Krishna's contemplating the beauty of Radharani. And similarly, when Radharani sees the beautiful form of Krishna, she considers, my dear, beautiful faced friends, what is this before us? Is it a fresh monsoon cloud? Is it a sapphire blossom? It is a newly, is it a newly sprouted blue lotus flower? Ah, it is none of these because this form before us causes me to burn with passionate desire. I know this must be the wonderful dark moon of Gokula standing before us on Govardhan Hill. There's this beautiful poetry 
in the exchanges between Radha and Krishna, but it's not always very complimentary. Krishna says, you, you're, you're, you've been coming by here all the time. I'm the son of Nanda Maharaj. You haven't paid taxes. You have to pay taxes. And he starts to describe what the tax is that they have to pay, speaking specifically about Radharani. For the red Sindura mark on your parted hair, you must pay the toll of 100,000 glittering crystal stones. And for your beautiful braids, which glisten like black mascara, you must pay the toll of 200,000 charming sapphires. Oh, girl with the beautiful eyebrows, for your forehead, which shines like a golden half moon, you must pay the toll of 100,000 splendid moonstones. And, and on and on and on. He's appreciating quote, the beauty of Radha and saying, because of your beautiful features, you, your tax is going to be very high. <laughs> and remember, the Krishna and the, the gopis, they're from the cowherd community. So Vaishas, there's one thing that Vaishas like, and that's bartering. So there's a, a major part of the book is the bartering back and forth between the two parties. And it gets really heated and they start saying heavy things to one another. And it doesn't appear, it's, it's joyous in a different way because they're enjoying th these exchanges like anything. And as it goes on and on and on, finally, the sister of Madhu Mangal named Nandimukhi comes along. Now, Madhu Mangal is a Brahmana and their brother and sister, so she's a Brahmani and she's very amused by this behavior of these two groups, the Gopas and Gopis. And she asks, what's going on? What's going on? And they say, what's going on? And Nandimukhi says, you know what? Uh, this Yagya of Bhagri Muni is more important. So let the Gopis go and take care of delivering all their milk products to Bhagri Muni's Yagya. And tomorrow we'll meet you here again and pay the tax. So it was settled. And we'll find out more shortly because the, <clears throat> the book that uh, Dana Kevi Chintamani isn't done, but the pastime place is done here because tomorrow they're going to meet at a kund down by the side of Govardhan Hill, you'll see in the map where. So as we walk along on the right-hand side, this is Govardhan Hill, very tall and majestic and all ever present. It's something like when you walk around a deity, keeping the deity to your right. This is the long walk around the deity of Govardhan. And he's always there looking at you and you may be distracted, but he's always looking at you, inviting you to take shelter of him. Now, here's the Google map again. And on the lower section, on the left side of the Parikrama path is the Bhaktivedanta Ashram. It's an ISKCON center. There's some nice history connected. And on the other side, you'll see Dan Nivartan Kund, and there's also a Sarovar next to it. We'll visit those places as well. So for now, we're going to go to the Bhaktivedanta Ashram. Little history, as I understand it. Uh, there was a period of time when both Tamal Krishna Maharaj and Giriraj Maharaj had enormous affinity for Govardhan, and they felt it would be really nice to have an ISKCON center near Govardhan, so that particularly devotees, particularly those who are frontline preachers and sannyasis and who are always very busy with dealing with new people to be able to come, be with Govardhan, be, be in sadhu association. That was their vision for this place. They found a place. It was the property of a king and with um, the expertise of Tamal Krishnamaraj and so forth, the king sold them this property. Here's what it looks like from the outside. There's a boundary wall. And let's go inside and see the uh, Bhaktivedanta Ashram. There's the front gate. Now we're walking into the front gate 
and see the structures inside. On the right hand side, this is the Pushpa Samadhi of Tamal Krishna Maharaj. And nearby, there's a sitting place for Radha and Krishna where they can come and enjoy their pastimes together. And in the same courtyard, there's many Shalagram Shilas that have been piled up by the local devotees uh, for worship. Inside, there's two main temples. One is a Krishna Balaram temple. There's Balaram, this whitish or lighter colored Govardhan hill and Govardhan Shila. And on the other side is Krishna, the darker form. Very nicely cared for, nicely decorated. Krishna has this nice peacock feather and Balaram has this nice turban. And there's also a Gornitai altar, also nicely cared for. Very nice place to go to, to uh, visit. When we go in Prikrama, they're always very hospitable and it's like lots of sitting place, good place for having prasadam for Prikrama groups. And here's a, another image of the main Shalagram just at the, below the two Shalagram Shilas, the Krishna Balaram Shilas. So now we're going back out on the road and heading for Dan Nivartan Kund, which is going to be on our right. And to our right, there's images of Govardhan Hill and the cows and the monkeys and so forth. Now we're going to go to number nine, which is Dan Nivartan Kund. The, the meaning Nivartana is to return and Dana means to pay a toll or a tax. So the gopis had made this promise through Nandimukhi to return. And this is where they went. Um, when the cowherd boys came to receive the payment of their tax, as it turns out, there were thousands and thousands and thousands of gopis waiting, ready to ambush the cowherd boys. And they surrounded the cowherd boys when the cowherd boys came and they tied their sikas to the trees and to the rocks and insisted that Krishna pay tax to Radharani because Krishna had offended her. Now look in the left corner of the kund and you'll see a little structure you'll see this from some other directions also that's the place where radha sat on a throne and krishna placed his head at her feet to ask forgiveness for radha for his mischief now here's a different time of the year it actually, this is before some repair, but it's nice and green. This is after the repair, less green. And we're going to now hear some verses written <clears throat> by the Goswamis, by Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, specifically. Sri Krishna enjoyed the tax pastime in a secluded place on the bank of this lake. Thus, it has become known as Dan Nivartan Kund. The truth of this lake remains hidden to a person averse to the mellows of pure devotional service. May that Dan Nivartan Kund kindly allow me to reside on her banks. That's a refrain, that's an ashtakam and, uh, to Dan Nivartan Kund. Another verse, it is filled with cool water and fragrant flowers. It blossoms with good fortune attained from the peerless water pastimes of the youthful couple and their sweet friends. May that Don Nivartan Kund kindly allow me to reside on her banks. There's that structure right in the front or in the back center. That's the throne where Radha was seated and Krishna paid his obeisances at her feet. So in addition to Dan Nivartan Kund nearby, there's another 
Dan Sarovar, because Krishna enjoyed the Dan Keli pastime in a secluded place by the shore of this lake, it has become known as Dan Sarovar. Raghunath Das Goswami writes, I pray that I may reside at Dan Sarovar, the place where Lord Krishna enjoyed the Dan Keli pastime. And there you see the place where Radha sat, the throne where Krishna bowed his head before Radharani and accepting Radharani as the queen of Vrindavan, begging her forgiveness. So she enjoyed and Krishna enjoyed this pastime and there's many versions of it. The tax pastime is one of Krishna's favorites. So now we're going to move along the path, keeping Govardhan to our right. And as we see the uh, height of Govardhan is rising up and it's uh, very steep. Here is a little bit further from a distance. And as we go along, of course, there's different times of the year, we see more greenery sometimes than others. But the, the, the whole picture of Govardhan is very, very beautiful, very charming. And the cows, of course, love being by the side of Govardhan Hill. And here we see one of the celebrated Nilagai. See that fellow up at the top? It, it, it says Nilagai means, in local language, means a black cow or blue cow. And uh, it's a cow, but not a cow. It's more like a deer or an antelope or something, but they like it at Coverdown Hill. There's a lot of them. Now here's a, another Google map showing way over at the far right, that's Radhakund. Way over at the far left, that's the tail of the, the peacock or the tail of Govardhan, Punch, Punchari. And there's Govardhan town in the middle. So just to give you a picture of where we are, you can see in the, just to the left of center, the hill of Govardhan gets very large and much taller, and then starts to taper off towards the other end. Um, we're going to move along the side and take a look at number 10, because the last place we were at was Dandivartan Kun number nine. Number 10 is a very special place. It's a large shila uh, that you can reach by the inner path. By the inner path means you can see where the Govardhan Hill is. That's that darker picture that running vertically across the top of our screen. And where the tar road is, that's the, the outer path. The inner path is much nicer. And the inner path, you follow that little, little walking red line and you can reach this Govardhan Shila. And it has a few friends, some monkeys, waiting for the next pilgrims to come. And there's somebody there to assist the pilgrims to literally worship and bathe with milk this um, special Shila. So after having visited this large Shila number 10 on the map, there's a long stretch that's where the Anukut for the worship of Govardhan Hill was set up. And number 11 is Anyor town where those white roofs of buildings are. So it's a long stretch. And here's another map showing the same thing. Anior town is towards our left. Govardhan town is towards our right. There's Jati Poor village at the bottom. That could, now this is a flip side. Anior is, um, it's a little confusing. I'll just skip this picture. This is a, a photograph of one portion of a large section where the Anukut was set up when the, the, the Vrijvasis were making their offerings to Govardhan Hill. It's a very large area. 
And here's an image of the Govardhan Puja offerings to Govardhan Hill. There's prayers we'll find in our writings of the Goswamis about the Govardhan Hill and its majesty. Here's one. Who will not take shelter of Govardhan Hill? The best of mountains, the friend of Gokula, the charming bumblebee that for seven days stood on the graceful whirl of the lotus flower of Lord Krishna's hand and protected Braja from the mouth of the Indra crocodile raining a great monsoon. What pious person will not take shelter of Govardhan Hill, whose peaks, whose peak is the place of the pastimes for Lord Krishna, the master of the Surabhi cows, and near which is blissful Govard Govinda Kund, where a Surabhi cow, followed by hundreds, by humbled Indra, bearing the waters of the celestial Ganges, bathed Lord Krishna and secretly crowned him the king of the Surabhi cows. Another nice photo of the cows grazing on the side of Govardhan Hill and the hill itself. Very photogenic place. Very serene, very soothing just to see the images and cows happily grazing. So now we're going to move into Anior town. On the top, that's the Govardhan Hill. And below the top, that's Anior town where all those white, lighter colors are. That's the settlement of Anior town. And we're going to take a look now at number 12, which is Sankarshan Kund and uh, number 14 from the perspective of Sankarshan Kund, we'll take a look at number 14, which is the Gopal Temple. And here's the Gopal Temple, Gopal Rai Temple. This was uh, built on, uh, on the order or the instruction of Madhavendra Puri. Actually to the left is the old temple, the darker color, and to the right is the newer uh, newly restored Gopal Roy Temple. And down below, that's the Sankarshan Kun. So we're looking from a distance uh, at the Gopal Temple. We'll see the Gopal Temple from the other side of Govardhan Hill also. And now the, our ISKCON devotees or the followers of Lord Chaitanya don't go there because we don't walk on Govardhan Hill. But we're going to hear something further about Sankarshan Kund shortly. Now notice in the lower left corner, and same in this image, that's the old building now neglected and falling apart. But there's that pinkish colored or saffron colored little temple. It's a Lord Shiva temple, uh, very small. Here's what it is up close and inside there's worship of Lord Shiva and the Shiva Linga and Ganesh and Kartikeya are being worshiped here by Shiva worshipers. Of course, their mood is that Lord Shiva is the best of all the devotees of the Supreme Lord. That's the mood in which they worship. So now same image and notice where the red line is. Red line is stopping at Number 11, that's the Anior town. And then it goes over to 12 and 13. That's where we're going next. 12 is um, according to the, something's wrong with this. Hang on a second. The Vishnu Purana and the Adi Varaha Purana both speak of <clears throat> the Sankarshan Kund. And they speak that 
specifically the glories of Samkarshan Kund. Uh, one who bathes can free themselves from all sins, including the sin specifically, the sin of killing a Brahmana. I mentioned in the first session about Narayana Bhatta Goswami, if you remember. Narayana Bhatta Goswami uh, wrote a book about the pastimes, places of Krishna and, and reestablished over a thousand of such places in assistance to Rupa and Sanatana Goswami. He was an initiated disciple of one of Sanatana Goswami's disciples. One of the chief references for what he did was in Adivaraha Purana. In the Adivaraha Purana, there is specific mention of Hanuman wanting to carry Govardhan to help make a bridge. In Adivaraha Purana, it's, it says, Hanuman heard this voice. Oh, the bridge has been built, so he set Govardhan down. Govardhan wanted service to Ram. It's distrust in Adi Varaha Purana. Apparently there's a lot of reference material in Adi Varaha Purana about Vrindavan town, and Vrindavan village and Krishna's pastime places, including Sankarshan Kund. So notice on the right, there's, a, there's clouds in the sky, but you look carefully and you'll see there's the Govinda Roy Temple, the Gopal Roy Temple. Now, following that red line, we go interior a little bit and we'll come to the uh, Balaram Temple. The Balaram Temple has a deity of Krishna's elder brother, Daoji means elder brother, and it's a five foot tall deity. And uh, this, it is said, this deity was one of the deities installed by Vajranaba at a point in time when there was danger of a Muslim attack, the large deity of Daoji was immersed in the Sankarshan Kund. And long, many, 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 many years later, uh, the deity was rescued and cleaned and placed in this little temple and there's the Daoji deity or Balaram on our right. And the smaller, younger brother of Balaram is Krishna, the small deity on our left. Here's a close up of Daoji. And uh, here's a close up of the Krishna deity with Anantashesh behind him. It's a very nice place. I mean, it's very simple and innocent and you, if you don't have a guide, you won't be able to find it, but it's a nice place. Nice deity, very merciful deity. So next you see the red line is going to take us from the Balaram temple to number 15, which is the Gopal Prakat Stali. Gopal Prakat Stali means the place where the deity Gopal was manifest. We're okay? You're okay. Okay. Here's a painting of Madhavendra Puri. Most of you know. Madhavendra Puri was the spiritual master of Ishwara Puri who was the spiritual master of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Madhavendra Puri was a Paramahamsa sannyasi who traveled to various holy places. And when he came to Vrindavan, he had been fasting for several days because one of his vows was he would never ask people for food, but if they came and gave him something, he would accept. So it's, the detail is found length in Chaitanya Charitamrita, so I won't narrate the detail, but Gopal in a cowherd boy form came and brought him a pot of milk. There was some exchange between the two and Gopal left to go milk the cows and Madhavendra Puri drank the milk 
and was in ecstasy drinking the milk that was provided for him by Krishna in the form of a little cowherd boy. That night in a dream, the cowherd boy came and said, actually, I've been waiting for you. A deity form is in the brush and has been neglected for a long, long time. Please go in the morning and find me and worship me nicely. So the place where he found the deity is here. Gopal Prakat Stali. There's a little shrine. And if uh, you come at the right time of the day, they'll let you inside and you can see the place where the deity was found. Now the deity was in thick brush and they took some uh, workers and they cut back the thickets and growth of trees and shrubs and things. And they found the deity here. This is the place where the Gopal deity was found at the very top. There's a Sheila that's being cared for and worshiped nicely. And the footprint of Krishna. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to this place, he wanted to see the Gopal deity who was at the top of the hill, but he wouldn't walk on the hill. And so the deity came down. The circumstance of the deity coming down was there was some threat of safety of the deity. And so to, to bring the deity to a better place of safety, they took him from the temple and brought him down the hill. And Lord Chaitanya danced in ecstasy, as you see. And for days, he was able to take darshan of Gopal. Um, nice pastime. There's more to be said. We'll hear some more when we get to the other side. Well, and when we get to Govardhan, to Govinda Kund, Govinda Kund. We'll hear some more. Here's a nice local uh, deity of Gopal, with, but it's in the Sheila form. Now we're going to spend some time just discussing the, the pastime of Krishna's lifting of Govardhan Hill. Um, Krishna saw that the cowherd men headed by his father were busily arranging a sacrifice. So he asked his father, what was the purpose of the sacrifice and the tradition behind it? And as Nanda Maharaj began explaining, um, here's Krishna pointing to Govardhan Hill, Nanda and the other elders and some little cowherd boys and some of the gopis. It's a nice painting of Govardhan Hill. Krishna's father told him, Lord Indra is the controller of the rain. The clouds are his personal representatives and they directly provide rain water, which gives happiness and sustenance to all creatures. Not only we, my dear son, but also many other men worship him, the Lord and master of the rain giving clouds. So Krishna had another point of view. Krishna argued, since Lord Indra cannot in any way change the destiny of human beings, which is born of their own nature, why should people worship him? May a sacrifice for the pleasure of the cows, Brahmanas and Govardhan Hill begin with all the paraphernalia collected for worshiping Indra. Let, me, let this sacrifice be performed instead. There was many other things. See the area? This is where the Anukut is. This whole area was filled with offerings. Whew. Krishna continued, that many different kinds of food be cooked from sweet rice to vegetable soups, many kinds of fancy cakes, both baked and fried should be prepared and all the available milk products should be taken for this sacrifice. The brahmanas who are learned in Vedic mantras must properly invoke the sacrificial fires. Then you should feed the priests 
with nicely prepared food and reward them with cows and other gifts. After giving food to everyone else, including such fallen souls as dogs and dog eaters. We don't know if they were dog eaters, but he mentions them. You should give grass to the cows and then present your respectful offerings to Govardhan Hill. After everyone has eaten to his satisfaction, you should all dress and decorate yourselves handsomely and then circumambulate the cows, the brahmanas, the sacrificial fires, and Govardhan Hill. Same painting we saw earlier. So Nanda Maharaj was very happy and they performed the worship of Govardhan Hill. And Krishna, we heard in the morning session about Krishna being the best of the devotees of Hari, but Krishna also showed that he was, Govardhan was Hari. Krishna then assumed an unprecedented huge form to instill faith in the cowherd men, declaring, I am Govardhan Hill. He ate the abundant offerings. Now it's very wonderful. We see in the painting, Krishna is pictured. Hari, who ate all the offering, is pictured. And Govardhan Hill, who is also Krishna, is pictured. We have three different forms of Krishna at once in this Leela. It's very special. And here's Krishna showing the right demeanor. He came before this form of Hari and paid his obeisances, as did all the other residents of Vrindavan following him. And here's a very nice painting showing Hari being worshipped. And the front of him is uh, Lord Brahma, and by the other side is Lord Shiva, and so forth and so on, Lord Indra. Indra is paying his obeisances. Uh, you see in the center, a little bit to the right of the center. That's after the whole Govardhan Leela took place. So here's where the Anukut was set up. Here's some of the other images of that area. It's really, really large several miles long and the whole place was filled with the Anukut. Now I forgot to bring that little sound device. Do you have your little sound device? There's some sound effects which we don't want to miss out on because it's nice. We're going to hear some thunder. That's what this is about. Angry Indra sent forth the clouds of universal destruction, known as Samvartaka. Indra told the clouds. Go remove the pride and bring their animals to, to destruction. I will follow you riding on my elephant and taking with me powerful wind gods to decimate the coward village of Nanda Maharaj. That's it. There's more coming. Clouds blazed with lightning bolts and roared with thunder as they hurled down hailstones as the clouds released torrents of rain as thick as massive columns, the earth was submerged in the flood. The cows and other animals shivering from the excessive rain and wind and the cowherd men and ladies pained by the cold all approached Lord Govinda for shelter. Krishna said to himself, because we have stopped his sacrifice, Indra has caused this unusually fierce unseasonable rain together with terrible winds and hail by my mystic power 
I will completely counteract this disturbance caused by Indra when I break the false prestige of those bereft of goodness, my purpose is to bring them relief. I must therefore protect the cowherd community by my transcendental potency, for I am their shelter. I am their master. And indeed, they are my own family. After all, I've taken a vow to protect my devotees. Those are Krishna's contemplations. Lord Krishna, who is Vishnu himself, picked up Govardhan Hill with one hand and held it aloft just as easily as a child holds up a mushroom. Of course, you all know the pastime, the Govardhan Leela, but how can we visit Govardhan without narrating the Govardhan Leela? So that's what we're doing. Notice that Krishna is standing up on top of something because he was only seven years old. So he had to step on a little mound and there he's holding the hill in the air. With my mystic power, I'll protect the people of Raja who have taken shelter of me, who consider me their Lord and who are my relatives. This is my vow. But another purpose was being fulfilled. Krishna was giving his association to all the bridge bosses uninterruptedly for seven days and seven nights. By continuously drinking the nectar of the beauty and sweetness of Sri Krishna, the residents of Vrindavan felt no hunger, thirst or fatigue. And Lord Krishna, by seeing their beautiful forms, also forgot about eating, drinking, and sleeping. There's the rain coming down the sides of the hill. Of course, the hill's much bigger than that image shows. Here's the floods coming all over the place torrents of rain coming down. Notice Sudarsan Chakra is zooming around the outside to keep the flooding. They're coming under the hill by Krishna's inviting them. The lightning bolts in the background. Krishna's protecting of his devotees is something that he loves to do. And the devotees love that position of being sheltered by him. When Indra observed the exhibition of Lord Krishna's mystic power, he became most astonished, pulled down from his platform of false pride and his intentions thwarted, he ordered his clouds to desist. The image just above that text, that's Indra. And above, that's the Sudarshan Chakra. And down below, we see Indra paying his obeisances before Krishna and right behind him in the lower right corner, that's his Airavata elephant. Krishna said, my dear coward men, that's birds chirping because now it's the sun's coming out. My dear coward men, please go out with your wives, children and possessions Give up your fear. The wind, wind and rain have stopped and the river's high waters have subsided. While all living creatures looked on, the Supreme Personality God had put down the hill in its original place, just as it had stood before. The resident of Vrindavan overwhelmed, that's it, that's it overwhelmed with ecstatic love, came forward to greet Sri Krishna according to their individual relationships. Demigods sang his praises and showered flowers. A great universal festival took place. Demigods played their conch shells and kettle drums and began to sing. The image in the background is the shower of flowers, by the way. That's what's intended. So what follows is Indra realized his mistake and there's details. Indra went to Brahaspati, what should I do? Brahaspati said, go with Surabi. He went to the heavenly realm where there are Surabi cows. He brought one Surabi cow with him and together Surabi, Indra and Airavata came 
to offer their prayers, Indra to offer his prayers, and Surabhi to perform her Abhishek. So the Abhishek of Surabhi resulted in this Govinda Kund. And we'll see many images of Govinda Kund, very celebrated place in the pastimes of Krishna. There's Govardhan Hill just in the backdrop, rising very high. And by the side of Govardhan Hill, you see in the left corner of the photograph, there's some structures. This is where, um, when Madhavendra Puri found the deity, it's where he stayed. And there's other places we'll see shortly. Um, Balabacharya came and stayed here for some time. Uh, this is a small deity of Gopal. Uh, a little bit of the history is Madhavendra Puri, after one year of worshiping Gopal, this is the deity of Gopal, now in Natadwar, he, in, he entrusted the worship specifically to two brahmanas along with others who were assisting and as they became elder, Raghunath Das Goswami entrusted the worship of Gopal to Vittala, the son of Balabacharya. Vittala, who was Balabacharya's son, had become very, very, very deeply, deeply devoted to Lord Chaitanya. So much so that Raghunath Das gave that service to him to worship Gopal. And we'll hear when we get to the other side some further details, but as you know, the Gopal deity is no longer in Vrindavan on top of Govardhan Hill. The Gopal deity was there for some time, but that Gopal deity is now in Natador. So we'll hear that history tomorrow. And that's the end, we ending at Govinda Kund, following still along the Eastern side of Govardhan Hill, but there are many, many places to visit at the beginning portion of um, this Parikrama, and that's why we've divided things the way that it's been divided. And tomorrow morning, we'll navigate our way down to the detail in between things, the tale of Govardhan Hill and many interesting places there. Yeah. Shila Prabhupada Ki. Jai. So we have a moderator that's going to invite discussion. Yes. Hare Krishna, everybody. Uh, I have unmuted everyone. Please feel free to unmute and ask your question or comments. Raise your hand first. It's from Naik, it's going. Okay, speak up so we can hear you. You need to unmute Anjali. Anjali, please unmute. Can Please unmute. Looks like it's just froze. Okay, while Anjali Mataji comes back, does anybody else have any questions? She can, she can unmute now. She's speaking, but we can't hear her.
Yeah, put your question in the chat box and it can be read aloud. As I said, technology is great when it works and very frustrating when it doesn't. So I can see somebody is feeling a little frustrated right now <laughs> and she's <laughs> laughing. <laughs> Damodu Prabhuji, did you have a question? You can unmute. Uh, no, we don't have a question. So while we're meeting, meeting, Maharaj, can you please clarify, like I've seen references where Govardhan Hill is referred to as a devotee of the Lord also, is that right? Not only is referred to, but is it, our Acharyas prefer to see Govardhan as a devotee than as Krishna himself. Govardhan is both a devotee of Krishna and Krishna himself. We know from the Govardhan Leela, Hari showed himself as Govardhan is Hari. And the, Gop the Gopis see Govardhan as Hari Das Varya. So that's a Srimad Bhagavatam reference. And based upon that Srimad Bhagavatam reference, the ecstasy, the, the love of the, the worshippers of Lord Chaitanya see Govardhan as a devotee. So while we, let's say, those who worship Govardhan Shila, they may worship Govardhan Shila as Krishna, a form of Krishna and put a peacock feather and give him a flute and so forth, worship him in that way. And deeper is he's simultaneously Krishna and the most beloved of Krishna's devotees or Haridas Varya. So you wanted the scriptural reference, the scriptural reference is right there in Srimad Bhagavatam on the authority of the gopis. Thank you very much. I do have a comment here. Uh, this is from Mahi Mataji. Right on the authority of the gopis. I have been enjoying your Ramayan classes online. Is there a time we will know if... Here. Uh, this is from Mahi Mataji. Right is there There's a time a we will know... Is that, there's an echo. Somebody, yeah. Is there a time we will know if you are ready to visit Vrindavan, especially if you're sad? Sadhana is not steady. When we visit Prindavan, we want to go in the mood of receiving the mercy of the Holy Dham. Just like when we just like when we chant the holy name, we want to receive the mercy of the holy name. We may not be so qualified or we come before the deity, we may not be so qualified, but we worship because we want to receive, we want to offer and we want to receive. So yes, you can go to Vrindavan, even your sadhana is not so great. And the benefit you'll, you'll, you would get is less than if someone whose sadhana is very fixed and strong, but you'll get benefit because by nature, the Holy Dham is pure and purifying. So by all means, go to the Holy Dham and become purified. Be ready for anything though, because purification comes in many forms. Thank you, Devi Das is ready. Hare Krishna, Dhanava Pranams, and thank you. Ah, now we can hear you. Hi. Thank you, thank you for such a wonderful seva and the special effects, amazing. Thank you. Uh, the sequel is better than the original part one, in my personal opinion, because of uh, the extra endeavor you have done. Uh, my question is, how? What is the practical method to take care and repair a kund? You showed pictures of before and after of how it was green, how it was taken care of. So how do we not take offense 
when we see it green as a devotee? How can I, as a devotee in Arizona, help in the seva? And how do we know that we are not cheated in the process? Well, you, ha you have to connect with people who are trustworthy. And if you don't take care to connect with people who are trustworthy, it's hit or miss, and often it's miss. So those who know who, is, who are trustworthy individuals, those who are trustworthy will know who are trustworthy individuals. And through trustworthy individuals, you can work through them. Um, there are many. There are many who are not trustworthy also, but if you're, 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 you want to help, and one of the best to help what? Improve the, the, appear, the appearance of the places of Krishna's pastimes. One of, the, one of the facilities that Prabhupada gave during his lifetime was he called it the Mayapur Vrindavan Trust, MVT. And MVT had a, a purpose <clears throat> of uh, improving the places of Lord Chaitanya's pastimes and places of Krishna's pastimes, like you saw at Gwal Pokar in the morning session. It was really run down. But the oh, it's called Bhaktivedanta Charity Trust, excuse me, Bhaktivedanta Charity Trust has its trustees and they spend money very wisely in improving things that are for the, not just for ISKCON's benefit, for the benefit of devotees from all over the world, from all over the ba all different backgrounds. So Bhaktivedanta Charity Trust is one very trustworthy place to offer some assistance, if that's what you wish to do. And in the meantime, how do I keep the story in my heart and look beyond the green <laughs> of a kund or the dilapidation of a kund well, and, and, and see that. I, I, I really um, like, there's a record, uh, Premadatri can remind me to send her the link to uh, talk on this topic by uh, Burijan's wife. And um, she spent many, many years in Vrindavan. She has deep realization about Vrindavan and how to see beyond the, the, uh, the external. And even when you're in a distant place like Arizona and she's in Perth, Australia, keep Vrindavan in your heart. So she has some wonderful tips. So Prima Dhatri can send me a little message. I'll send it to her. She can forward it to you or to all of you. Specific about keep Vrindavan in your heart when you're remote and not see the external part only. Hare Krishna. How are we doing? Anybody else? We have some local online people. Should we go yes. to the local online people? Yeah, there's one more question, Maharaj. This What's is that? from Bryce. Uh, Hare Krishna, my question is besides yoga and chanting, what practice or ritual to connection with Lord Shiva to become better devotee of Lord Krishna? He wants to know if it's advisable to approach Lord Shiva for the purpose of becoming a devotee of Krishna. That's the question? Yes. Well, our, our acharyas don't recommend that so much. Uh, the acharyas recommend going through the disciplic succession from Krishna to reach the devotion to Krishna. That's recommended. Now, the other, it is, it's, it's indirect and not recommended, but it's certainly possible. But the difficulty is that one can get lost along the way easily. So the direct is better. Okay. So now we're going to do some local questions. That means, you know, our audience here in the central USA. 
but there may be people on from India, who knows? Go ahead. This question is from Mahati Kirti Mataji. Is there a story behind the appearance of Sankarshan Kund? Yes, we're going to do that tomorrow. Sri Radhika Mataji, will you kindly share what is your favorite place as you do Parikrama of Govardhan and why? I don't, I, I, Radha Kund, I think, is my favorite place. And why? Because as a father of Rupa Goswami, he says it's the most revered place in the whole universe. And it's most revered because it's non different than Srimati Radharani. But when, that, you know, back to the, one of the earlier questions to go visit Radha Kund then it takes more qualification to enter Radha Kund area and not make offense because it's so, so because it's so dear to Krishna and Radharani. But I think that's my favorite place and why. This is from Chinmai Desai. I have found it difficult for some time to reconcile with the Vallabha Sampradaya's narrative of Gopal Diti or Srina Ji's discovery. Can you please re-clear facts on origin and passing down of the deity? When we go to Jatipur, I was planning to go through that history. And naturally, um, one person and another person, even in our modern times, one person and another person seeing the same thing are going to re report what they experience differently. You know, or, or in a broader sense, history. The narr narrative of history is going to be different from one situation to another situation. You know, like, let's just take, you know, American history. The American history of how the European settlers came and how it's told in, you know, in, in a social studies class in, in, in grade school or junior high school is certainly different than from the Indian, um, Amer indigenous American Indian perspective or, you know, any, any, any depiction, any depiction of history, European history or, you know, whatever it is. So that the narrative is different, understood. It's just natural. Now, I can give you t tomorrow the perspective from the, the Godias, which is going to be different than the um, Balavas. There may be some similarity, but there's certainly going to be different. But t tomorrow, if you don't mind. This question is from Vachaspati. According to Radharani, Govardhan is the topmost devotee of Krishna. At the same time, Govardhan is none other than Krishna himself. Yes. We also know that Mahaprabhu is an incarnation of Krishna in the mood of a pure devotee. Does this mean that Mahaprabhu's mood as a devotee is analogous to Govardhan's mood? Well, he loves Govardhan like, like the gopis love Govardhan. Not exactly the way that you put it. He loves Krishna. He's in the mood of Radha loving Krishna. And the best of the devotees of Krishna is Govardhan. So he sees Govardhan in that way. Any... Anything else from the Phoenix or Portland group of devotees? There are, there are two more questions actually here. So okay. this is from Tirumurti Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, thank you for the series. My five-year-old daughter has a question. Hanuman is a devotee of Lord Ram and he has many powers. Example, he could fly. But we are 
Krishna devotees, but we do not have the same powers. Why? And this is from Tiru Prabhu. Do you, do you, you, said, you read it really fast and I didn't catch it. Did you catch oh, it? The... <laughs> Wait a minute. No, she's going to say it. You say it. Hanuman, as Lord Ram's devotee, had power to fly and do many things. Fly and do many things. Yeah. Do such... Um, Mystic he, powers. Yeah. So as Krishna's devotees, we don't have any such powers. Oh. Do you want powers to fly? You don't have to become a devotee of Ram. You can get powers to fly. But the, the, the pastime of Hanuman, he was not just a devotee. He was the son of Vayu. But are you aware that um, Madhvacharya, he had such powers too? He could travel at such a speed and move at such a speed that no one could keep up with him because he was also the son of Vayu. So he, you know, he's an, when, when you're an exceptional devotee, like Hanuman, you can do exceptional things. But the, 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 the real gift, the real mystic power or miracles of the devotee is to take people who aren't devotees and gradually bring them to the position of devotion. That's the greater miracle than flying even. So why don't you aspire for that instead of flying <laughs> or some other mystic power? Hare Krishna. Uh, next question is, it is recommended to do yoga and meditation to augment the chanting and deity service. As I'm getting into a lot of office work, I'm finding difficult to focus while chanting. Well, the power of bhakti stands without external support. However, if somebody like you or somebody else finds focus on bhakti, focus on the holy name is strengthened by something, then you do that something. But please just stay focused on what the real purpose of that other something is. Because once again, it's really easy to get distracted. Now, office work can clutter the mind. And the, the best agent for uncluttering the cluttered mind is the holy name. There isn't better medicine than the holy name. That's scriptural. And it's also a practical experience. Tendency would be if you augment with something else, that something else takes the priority position and the bhakti takes the back seat. That's a, that's a concern. If you augment with something, make sure it's in the back seat and bhakti's in the front seat. Then we have Shobhamai uh, Mataji. Um, I had an opportunity to go to Vrindavan even before I knew much about Vrindavan. So does it consider purifying? Yes. You touch fire, it burns. And you touch the Supreme Pure and you become pure. Even if you don't know what you're doing. When people take Krishna Prashadam, they may not know it's Krishna Prashadam. They're, they're getting purified just by taking Krishna Prashadam. Is that it? Yes. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, in the in anyone here? Something? Dila Prabhupada ki? Giriraj Govardhan ki? Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much.